In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace, mercy, and peace of our Lord and Savior be with all of you. And with your spirit. Good morning and welcome as we gather on this fourth Sunday of Advent, a very short week leading us to the great festival of Christmas, but one of great goodness as we gather in praise of our God and listen to the gospel that enters us more closely into the story of the incarnation. So let us prepare to celebrate this sacred liturgy as we call to mind our sins and acknowledge our need for God's divine mercy. Let us ask for that very gift. Lord Jesus, you are the Son of God and the Son of Mary. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the King of kings and the Prince of peace. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are present in our hearts and in our needy world. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us from our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Pour forth, we beseech you, O Lord, your grace into our hearts, that we to whom the incarnation of Christ your Son was made known by the message of an angel may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord spoke to Ahaz saying, Ask for a sign from the Lord, your God. Let it be deep as the netherworld, or high as the sky. But Ahaz answered, I will not ask, I will not tempt the Lord. Then Isaiah said, Listen, O house of David, is it not enough for you to, you weary people? Must you also weary my God? Therefore the Lord himself will give you this sign. The virgin, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall name him Emmanuel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let the Lord enter. He is king of glory. Let the Lord enter. He is king of glory. The Lord's are the earth and its fullness, the world and those who dwell in it. For he founded it upon the seas and established it upon the rivers. Let the, Let Lord, the Lord enter. enter. He, he is, is the king, king of glory. Who can ascend the mountain of the Lord or who may stand in his holy place? One whose hands are sinless, whose heart is clean, Who's, who desires not what is vain. Let, Let the, the Lord, Lord enter. enter. He, is he is the King, king of, of glory. glory. He shall receive a blessing from the Lord, a reward from God his Savior. Such is the race that seeks for him, that seeks the face of the God of Jacob. Let, Let the, the Lord, Lord enter. enter. He, he is, is the King, king of, of glory. glory. A reading from the beginning of the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Paul, a slave of Christ Jesus, called to be an apostle and set apart for the gospel of God, which he promised previously through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures, the gospel about his son descended from David according to the flesh, but established as son of God in power according to the spirit of holiness, through resurrection from the dead, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him we have received the grace of apostleship to bring about the obedience of faith, for the sake of his name among all the Gentiles, among whom are you also, who are called to belong to Jesus Christ, to all the beloved of God in Rome, called to be holy. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks. be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. The virgin shall conceive and bear a son and they shall name him Emmanuel. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. This is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. When his mother Mary was engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found with child through the power of the Holy Spirit. Joseph, her husband, an upright man unwilling to expose her to the law, decided to divorce her quietly. Such was his intention when suddenly the angel of the Lord appeared in a dream and said to him, Joseph, son of David, have no fear about taking Mary as your wife. It is by the Holy Spirit that she has conceived this child. She is to have a son and you are to name him Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. 
all this happened to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin shall be with child and give birth to a son, and they shall call him Emmanuel, a name which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke, he did as the angel of the Lord had directed him and received her into his home as his wife. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> so again, as we gather on this very short week of the, the fourth week of Advent, it is just in a few days that we will be gathering again in wonderful places, wonderful houses of worship to celebrate the birth of a child that more than any other life has changed the course of human history everywhere and for all time. And just as a reminder, it, which we will do, James will also at the end of Mass this morning, is that on Christmas morning, the celebration of Mass through WISC-TV will air at 6 a.m. Be a very special Mass presided over by Bishop Marlino and a great blessing to begin our Christmas celebration. It's a simple story, isn't it, is it not, that we know by heart and we hear over and over again proclaimed. A simple story of very humble beginnings but profound and miraculous. And today in Matthew's Gospel, we hear the story of Mary's conception according to Joseph and that Joseph's whole experience from his point of view. And it's important to remember the culture of that particular time that for Mary and Joseph, when they became betrothed, that was a legal contract to get married. And so uh, a very definite journey that even though the celebration, the ceremony might be months off, that they still during that time of betrothal, that they were highly committed to each other, again, in a very legal kind of way. And so if there was ever any infidelity during the betrothal, that would be the same as adultery and would be great scandal. And even the woman could be easily put to death by stoning as punishment for her crime. And so we have this situation that, that leading up to the actual ceremony that after a ceremony that, that yes, Joseph would take her into his home and they would live as husband and wife, but knowing very well that, that she was pregnant and knowing that he was not the dad, we can imagine the kind of fear and angst that that would have caused Joseph at that time, wondering what to do. And so the, the Matthew's Gospel this morning really presents to us this wonderful man that we don't, don't know a whole lot about in sacred scripture, but what we do know is quite enough of his willingness to not shame her, to put her through a legal situation of divorce and humiliation, but to do so very quietly, very kindly respecting her and being able to work this out once he found out by divine intervention in the dream that this is a miraculous experience of how she became pregnant, that he was willing to really cooperate with God, even though we can well understand that he didn't fully understand what that was all about. Even perhaps Mary not fully understanding as a young teenager all that was happening to her. And so we have this wonderful man, very kind of quiet in the scriptures, but yet one who, as Pope Francis recently said, is such a model for us, a model of kindness and of humility and of obedience to God's will. And just as a very short quote from Pope Francis about Joseph, that through these virtues, this just, just man, Joseph, caring most lovingly for the mother of God and happily dedicating himself to the upbringing of Jesus Christ was placed over God the Father's most precious treasures. And so it is in that goodness that we hold as we enter into this fourth week of Advent and prepare again for the great festival of Christmas that obviously the focus is on this Christ child, the Son of God. His focus is on Mary in many ways, but lest we forget Joseph who models for us a great goodness and a great, a great hope for us in the, mystery, in the midst of so many of the mysterious things that happen in our lives that we continually deepen our trust in God, that God is always walking with us, and that what seems to be in appearances <clears throat> that we have fig all figured out, maybe that things have a different meaning and have a different experience, and so the patience to look with the wisdom of God, to look deeper in a prayerful kind of way for how God continues to guide us, and even in the midst of challenging and difficult times that we have in our own lives. And so, 
may we enter into this, this great celebration of this Christmas week with open hearts and open eyes, the eyes of faith that certainly a Joseph had and models for us to, to look beyond what we sometimes again see as appearances to the very presence of God who is with us. And in a very powerful way, every time we celebrate Eucharist, how God truly is most personally with us in word and in Holy Eucharist, the great gift that ennobles us and strengthens us each and every day to, to trust in the Lord and to be great witnesses of that faith for others. And especially with Joseph, to imitate his humility and his willingness to be accepting of God's will in his own life. And so may those virtues truly be a part of us and all peoples as we celebrate this great Advent week, as short as it is, but also the great festival of Christmas. I believe in one God, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, maker, maker of, of heaven and earth, earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In that same faith, let us entrust to the Lord now our special prayers of intercession that we may allow the Spirit of God to work within us, and may we have the faith and generosity of Mary and Joseph. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our homes and places of residence may be ha havens of hospitality and joy. May there be peace among people, especially in the Middle East, the birthplace of Jesus, and wherever there is war. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all in need facing the challenges of life, that the Christmas season will give them new hope and inspiration, that the assurance that God is with them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That God will provide to Francis our Pope, Robert our Bishop, and ministers of all faiths the strength to live and proclaim the gospel of life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our Christmas gatherings may truly celebrate the presence of God, sharing the goodness and love of our special relationships, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May Clarence Lukes, the special intention of today's Mass, and all who have died, for all who grieve the death of someone dear to them, may they find consolation and support. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the, the special intentions in our own lives, that they may be received by our loving God and answered in faith. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Gracious and loving God, we humbly offer to you our lives this day as we strive to always live more closely in your presence and to bring your presence to others in love and compassion. And so we humbly offer to you all of our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever.
and the mystery of this water and why may we come to share the divinity of Christ who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord, wash away my iniquities and cleanse me from my sins. Thank you, Nick. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May the Holy Spirit, O Lord, sanctify these gifts laid upon your altar, just as he filled with his power the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For all the oracles of the prophets foretold him, the Virgin Mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of the Nativity, so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exalted in his praise. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all of the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim, Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord God, God of hosts, hosts heaven, heaven and earth, earth are full of your glory. glory. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son, present in our midst when we are gathered by his love. And when is once for the disciples, so now for us. He opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing. He broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant that will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior, Savior of the of world, world, for, for by, by your, your cross, cross and, and resurrection, resurrection you, you have, have set, set us free. free. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, in whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us. And grant that by the power of the Spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. And so having called us to your table, Lord, confirm us in unity, so that together with Francis our Pope and Robert our Bishop, with all bishops, priests and deacons, and your entire people, as we walk your ways with faith and hope, we may strive to bring joy and trust into the world. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection, give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever, there in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and martyrs, and with all of the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At our Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come, thy will, will be, be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. Give, give us this day our daily bread, and, and forgive us our trespasses, as, as we forgive, forgive those who trespass, trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, temptation but deliver, deliver us from, from evil. Me. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Thank you. Let's minister the Lord's word of peace to those who are near us. Peace be with you, James. Thank you. Peace be with you, Nick. Thank you. Peace be with you, Lucas. Thank you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy, worthy that, that you should enter under my roof, roof but, but only say, say the word, word and my soul shall be healed. body of Christ, the body of Christ, the body of Christ. Let us pray. Having received this pledge of eternal redemption, we pray, Almighty God, that as the feast day of our salvation draws ever nearer, so may we may press forward all the more eagerly to be worthy the worthy celebration of the mystery of your Son's nativity, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. As our Mass is now ended, let us go to bring Christ peace and love to others. Thanks be to God. As shown on your television screen during today's Mass, the special one-hour Christmas Day Mass with Bishop Morlino will be shown on Christmas Day here on Channel 3 between 6 and 7 a.m. Please mark your calendars to join us in the celebration of the birth of our Savior, Jesus Christ. We express our sincere appreciation to the management and staff of WISC-TV for making the Christmas Day and weekly Masses possible for the past, for the past 46 plus years. Their commitment to public service and their social concern for the disabled and elderly of all faiths enables the television Mass to be an important part of the ministries of the Apostolate to the Handicapped. Father Larry Bakke, the director of the Apostolate to the Handicapped, and pastor of St. Clair of Assisi Parish in Monroe was the presider this morning. Joining Father Larry from the parish were our acolytes, Nicholas and Lucas Quinn, and today's minister of music, Daniel Button. Mary Fruits of St. Dennis Parish in Madison interpreted mass for our deaf community today. I am James Yeager, your television mass lector and commentator. On behalf of WISC TV and the Apostle to the Handicapped, I invite you to join us here on Christmas morning and again next Sunday for this Eucharistic celebration. Until then, may your week be filled with the joy and happiness of Christmas.